Hello everyone and welcome to Total War Through the Ages. In this episode, we are going to be defending Cordoba, which is actually going to be so much fun. I absolutely loved the defense of Cordoba for one very important reason that you guys will see. Now, besides that, of course, we also have this army that we have now for, uh, formed up properly, which we are going to be uh, sending to assist in the uh, conquering uh, or the offensive from Trier. And so we actually, so the army that I talked about last episode, most advanced faction, hey, hey uh, we did actually send it back to the, back farther west to go help conquer kind of uh, the French air region. And the army that we came, brought down from the north, uh, I don't remember the name of the settlement, but it's the settlement to the north that we already conquered a while ago. Uh, that place, we already had an army and we're bringing it, we brought it down and we're going to be sending a couple of scorpions along with it, uh, as uh, the first time I'm actually going to be using uh, artillery. Uh, so we're going to send a couple scorpions with it and we're going to send it to the north uh, directly to Trier. Uh, Trier. Uh, and now this one right here is the one that we're going to be sending up that way to continue our offensive in the west. So the northern offensive is still going strong and it will continue to go strong for quite some time i.e. until the Britons are entirely wiped off the face of the planet, because, you know, sorry about that, but, you know, we're Romans, we have to take over everyone. It's kind of our job. So, we have that army uh, rallied up, but here to the main event of the episode. So, first off, I was like, ah, oh, crap, I don't have, I, I have three units of early legionaries, which is the only, like, decent quality tro troops I have, and I was looking at their armies, and I was like, man, they have a huge army here, but I noticed something. They have predominantly cavalry, or not predominantly, but they have a lot of cavalry, cavalry and war dogs. And as we all know, cavalry and war dogs, i.e. horses and dogs, are not particularly good at climbing, well, ladders or siege towers, and they're not even that good at manning battering rams. Though I'm sure you could probably teach them to man battering rams, maybe. Anyway, <laughs> so... Basically what, th what this came down to is I actually had hope for this battle, because I was thinking, okay, if I can hold the walls, I'm not that concerned, so long as, now I was hoping, actually, well actually, let me finish the thought, if I can hold the walls, I'm not too worried about it, uh, and I actually decided that I kind of overstacked the walls, um, because there were two things I didn't know, one, I didn't know that the gatehouse actually poured burning oil, or whatever it's supposed to be, onto un enemy units as they're trying to enter through the gate, uh, in addition, the other thing I didn't realize was, um, or, that's the thing I didn't realize, so I actually, I didn't realize that initially, so I started pulling some of my Hastati off of the walls to try and go send them to help defend the gate, because obviously I was like, well, I'm not too worried about the walls. They don't have any heavy infantry. They only have light infantry. I'm fairly confident that my units will hold the walls, but I was a little bit worried about their cavalry charging through the gates uh, and potentially uh, wiping out some of my... Uh, because I only have mercenaries. I only have mercenaries and one unit of auxilia defending... Uh, the gates initially, so I decided to send the Hastati there. And now the reason I didn't deploy the Hastati there initially is because I was hoping that my towers would de actually destroy the enemy battering ram, in which case their cavalry would be completely worthless, because the only because I was very confident in being able to hold the walls because the, their infantry is either light infantry or skirmishers. And so again, uh, once their infantry got to the walls, I was also able to do this technique, which I really like, is let the enemies, particularly against siege towers, let the enemy get onto the wall and then attack them from both sides, and that seems to work really well uh, and the, with the ladders it's similar I kind of did this a uh, similar thing except with the ladders you can also just have a unit right in front of them to block them and of course well they're ladders they're not really doing they can't there's not a whole lot they can do uh, that you know unlike what that's the benefit of the siege towers of that they provide you an actual substantial number of guys can assault all at once kind of that initial rush out of the siege tower as were the ladders they come up one at a time per ladder and I think there's four ladders usually so Either way, the Siege Tower does have that advantage. Of course, the disadvantage being the Siege Tower can get destroyed. So here we have... I basically fast forward because I we completely repelled all their infantry assaults. And I was waiting for them to send their cavalry in through the gate. Because they did breach the gate. Um, unfortunately, my towers were not able to destroy the enemy ram. But here we have the enemy cavalry mass charge in. And I was like, ah, crap. Gotta hurry. Come on. Get the infantry in positions. Because I didn't realize that you can hear the screams of the dying men. That is right, and I was like, wait, why, why is that unit just route? Like, what's going on? Like, I, I was very surprised. I was like, hold on, what's going on? Because I was like trying to get my unit. I was so focused on getting my units in position that I didn't realize what was going on until I, uh, until I uh, rotate the camera around, and then I realized, like, oh, crap. 
hold on, something's happening, what's going on? And that's when I was like, oh, right, the gates are uh, pouring burning oil or whatever it's supposed to be onto them. And that's really, really effective. It's to the point where it made their entire, every unit of their cavalry routed before they even got through the gate. I mean, like, they, and then again, they come back and so I'm just like, okay, seems legit, whatever, uh, okay, we'll just, I'm not going to question it, but that is awesome. I have to say that, that was really fun to watch. Uh, and also just really, really hilarious of just like seeing all, all these, like half of the, not quite half, but like a quarter of the enemy army just getting wiped out trying to come through the gate. I just thought was hilarious. And do, because I know, know that, uh, this is a huge incentive. Enemy, enemy general goes in there and of course dies. So this was a major incentive that now that I know this, uh, I'm going to prioritize getting, uh, stone walls, i.e. this level of walls that have it so that the gates can pour burning oil on the enemies trying to enter in. I'm going to prioritize trying to get at those level of walls on all of my front line settlements. Any of the settlements that are un that are going to be under, uh, or at least un under threat of being attacked. Uh, so speaking of being under threat of being attacked, this is we are back in Trier once again, same as last episode. Now I did edit this one down a lot more than last episodes because, as I mentioned, uh, these these sieges are getting very samey. Now the siege of now Cordoba was very interesting and I thought it was pretty entertaining because of the. Uh, the gates. At least it was very entertaining for me because I didn't know that they did that the gatehouses did that until that battle, and I was like, "Oh, holy crap! This is insanely powerful." Uh, so I I'm really looking forward to trying to get stone walls in all of my settlements that are uh, constantly being attacked, because that way it'll make them a lot easier to defend, obviously. But it will also allow me to not have to leave as big of garrisons because like right now as this battle is a perfect example in Trier I have to leave a pretty good sized garrison here in order to guarantee my defense of the settlement uh, because they can you know force the openings in so many places but if I had stone walls a handful of good quality troops you know a handful of uh, you know early legionaries uh, mixed in with maybe a couple of auxilia or even or even fewer if or even probably like just a handful of legionary cohorts or again maybe a couple additional ones of early legionaries if we didn't have actual full-on legionaries either way the point is a handful of uh good quality infantry which of course rome has some of the best uh sword infantry in the game uh they they could easily defend a lot of these settlements from most of the attacks uh a lot it would take a lot fewer than what i have the garrisons i have in most of them so uh big priority prior priority Coming, going forward is upgrading all my uh, settlements that are under threat consistently to having stone walls. But uh, without further, oh, and by the way, that was the new guy. I don't, I believe that was the, um, I believe he married into the family or he was the son who came of it. Either way, uh, new general here. We're going to get him sent up to where he's useful. But that is all we have for this episode. Check back every Monday, Wednesday, Friday, and Saturday. Yes, that is the new schedule. Be sure to keep that in mind. But as always, Thanks for watching.